What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully everyone is healthy out there, staying busy, staying safe. Uh, some crazy times in the world right now and I hope you guys are all doing well. Uh, so I wanted to apologize for the lack of posting lately. Been busy with some uh, home renovations while it's been slow at work. Thanks for all the continued support. If you're new, continue subscribing if you like the videos and let's jump right into it. So today we're going to be talking about checking out motors electrically. So I had one of my own apprentices this past week. He didn't really understand the concept of uh, checking out a single phase motor with his multimeter. Um, so I wanted to cover checking them out electrically, specifically single phase, how you can determine which windings are which, uh, especially if maybe you unplug a compressor or something like that, or a, a fan motor, you didn't pay attention where the leads went. You can figure out which, which windings are what by uh, checking the resistance of the windings. Um, we'll also go through, going to be checking with my X-Tech Megameter just to show some of you guys how you can Megohm a motor windings um, and how you can use that as a trend or a uh, predictive maintenance over time. So as you can see in front of me, I've got this little simulator that I've made uh, to help replicate what it would look like coming across a compressor with a little round plug that maybe isn't labeled. So most of them are, but some of them aren't. And I've seen a few posts lately of uh, people trying to figure out which leads are what if they had lost that plug or didn't get a factory plug uh, to replace their compressor with. So there's a way that you can figure it all out and we're gonna get right into it. So first things first, when you're checking out a motor electrically, you're gonna wanna make sure that it's disconnected from everything else in the system. That way that you are ensuring that you're only checking the electrical windings in this specific component. You're not gonna get it reading through anything else in the system. Uh, maybe reading a short in the wiring between your contactor and your compressor or your, or your relay and your motor, something like that. So it's always, proper to make sure that it is completely isolated, which, whichever you're checking out. So for this one, we're gonna be using this Amprobe AM530. So make sure your meter is on ohms to read resistance. Uh, check those meter leads together. Make sure they read zero, know that your meter is good. And you're gonna start checking out this motor. So first things first, if you come to a motor that has maybe tripped a breaker or something like that, you wanna verify that it's not shorted to ground. So in order to do that, you're going to place one lead at one of your terminals for your windings and check it to ground. All of these should be reading OL so that you know that there is no path for uh, any of the electrical current to travel to ground. So as you can see on this one, we're getting OL from all three of the windings to ground, which is exactly what we want. And your next test is going to be checking the resistance value between each windings. So when we're checking out our motor windings, you know that your start plus your run is going to be the highest resistant value. Your start winding is going to be the second highest resistant value and your run winding will be the smallest resistant value. So when we're checking out a single phase motor like this, I typically like to grab a piece of paper so that I can write it down and I will label my leads here. And I'll give them a number one, two, three. So now first we're gonna check from one to two. So you can see from one to two, we've got 22 ohms. So one to two is 22. Two to three. Two to three gives us 29.5. And three to one gives us 51. So now that we have the resistance values between all of them, we can determine which is what on this motor. So if you didn't know which one was your common start and run, now you can figure it out. We know that one to three is our highest resistance rating. So that means that we've got one to two, two to three are our start and run windings. So if you look at that on the schematic, it would look something like, excuse my terrible drawing. You have one winding there, the second one go into there and you'd know that the capacitor is going to be over here. 
So now that we know three to one is our highest resistance value, so you know always across from there is common, which is gonna be between your start and your run windings. So we now know that two is common. One to two is 22 ohms, so we know that this is our run winding. And two or th two to three is 30, 30 ohms, 20, 29.5 ohms, which we know is now our start winding. So now that we've taken those resistance values, we know this is common, this is run, and this is start. So we can go ahead and wire this back up uh, how it's supposed to be wired according to the schematic. So for this one, we can see that our motor checks out okay. We know that our run winding plus our start winding should always equal the two together. If, you, if you're checking your run to common, common to start, and then both of them together and they don't add up, then you know that you've got a short somewhere. So what would happen if you find that you've got OL on one of the windings? That means that you've got an open circuit between those two. There's no path for electric, electric current to pass between them. And what you may find is, is some electric motors have got a thermal protection that will be drawn some, somewhat like this. Sometimes it looks like a little thermostat, which is in line. So if you come up and your motor is extremely hot, it's very likely that these have opened. So I've got a video here that kind of demonstrates that. You may have seen it on the Instagram. I had a bunch of people asking me what it really was and how it works. So as you can see with this one, I'm taking a lighter to it, heating it up. As it gets hot enough, that bimetal disc pops open, opens up the, those contacts, and it no longer allows electrical current to flow through. As it cools back down, the uh, bimetal will pop back closed, closing those contacts, allowing everything to go back to normal. So it's just a safety device to protect the motor uh, from doing any permanent damage. So if you come across something that's reading oh well and the motor is extremely hot or the compressor is really hot, make sure you cool it down first. Check out the rest of the system, as I mentioned. Find out the root cause of it. Vent that bearings have failed. You've lost a leg of power. Your single phase in your motor. Capacitor has failed. Could be running low on refrigerant, not getting enough uh, refrigerant back to cool the motor windings of that compressor. It's possible that you can get away with an easy fix without having to condemn a compressor. Let your customer know what you found. You might be able to save them, save them some money and get them back up and running quickly. All right, so now we know how to ohm out the single phase motor. If this was a three phase motor, when you're checking it out between the windings, all of the windings on a three phase motor should be the same. So typically, Something like this, you'd maybe see three ohms, three ohms, and three ohms between all of them. A three phase, they all need to be the same. You still should have no resistance to ground and be good to go. So that's how you check out a single phase motor or a three phase motor using a regular multimeter uh, with resistance. A mega ohm meter is also checking resistance, but they have a much higher range. One mega ohm is one million ohms. So it does that by using actual high voltage through the windings to determine at what point you're getting some voltage leak through those windings. So you may not realize that almost everything will conduct electricity through it uh, if the voltage gets high enough. So, I mean, same principle as lightning or a uh, spark igniter. That's why you see those things running 15,000 volts. Uh, if, that, if the voltage is high enough, it will arc. So same thing as your insulation begins to deteriorate over time in your motors, your compressors, they will end up with small micro cracks uh, wearing away from acid in your refrigerant. They're eating away at those windings, overheating, um, all that stuff eats away at the insulation. And over time, those are gonna cause, that can lead to a short to ground. You could have particulate in your refrigerant or say if you run low on oil, you could be having metal shavings in there that might be nicking them, stuff like that. So a megometer traditionally is not used for a diagnostic tool. It's more of a predictive maintenance tool. So it's not like you're gonna be coming out there checking to see if it's uh, shorted with a megometer. If it's shorted, you're gonna be able to see that with a regular meter. But if you are going out every maintenance, every time checking on that equipment and taking those megohm readings and recording those down, you can start to trend that over time and see when uh, you're starting to have some bigger issues. So. I've seen motors that'll run, that are still running, that have 
resistance values as low as two mega ohms. So it's not always a, a cut and dry thing with them. Every motor typically has a different range, and that's why I say that it's used as more of a predictive maintenance instead of a, of a diagnostic tool. So to run one of these, you need to have a good ground. Typically, I like to ground it to the um, body or the chassis of the motor or the compressor. Sometimes you're gonna have to scrape off some of that paint to make sure you have a good connection. So I've actually connected the ground wire of this motor right to this lug here that I labeled as ground. So you always wanna check it first, make sure that your leads are working properly, just like you do with the regular ohm meter. So we'll hit test with them together. It's gonna to send out 250 volts. You're gonna see the volts aren't gonna go high because it's going to uh, realize that it's a direct short immediately. See, so it keeps it down at three volts, zero, zero, zero. So this thing is reading as it should. So after you verify that your meter runs properly, like I said, connect that to a good ground on the housing of the motor or the compressor, and then you're gonna start your test. So set everything up, go to your meter lead, take your meter lead to one of the windings, run it at 500 volts. So you can start at whatever. You can see that at 250 volts, it'll read up to 200 mega ohms, 500 volts, still 200 mega ohms, and at 1000 volts, it can read up to 2000 mega ohms. So we're gonna hit test, and I hit lock. So you can see we're running 504 volts, and we're reading nothing on this meter. One over here like that is signifying that it's, it's oh well, you're not getting any reading through it. So after you take the lock, you wanna let your meter discharge the voltage all the way down to zero before you remove the lead. And you're good to go. So you can do that through all three leads or on like a three phase motor typically, if they've got the wires hanging out of them, I'll just clamp this onto all of those leads at once, check the ground, run the test, and see if I've got any, uh, or record my, whatever resistance it is to ground and go from there. So for that one, you saw that we got nothing to ground. So now let's go ahead and check a little bit higher resistance value up to 2000 mega ohms. So we'll hit test here and lock it. So you can see we're putting a thousand five volts through this, through these windings right now, and we're getting 325 mega ohms resistance through the windings to ground. So you're gonna go ahead and take lock off and let that discharge. Back down to zero. So what that's telling us there is we have 325 million ohms resistance value from this lead making its way through the insulation to ground. So 325 is, is plenty acceptable. Um, usually I don't start to worry until I start seeing below 50 mega ohms. It's usually a, a sign for concern. But like I said, I've seen big 75 horse pumps running at two mega ohms and they've been running that way for years and never had any issues. So predictive maintenance tool, as you see that resistance value start coming down, you know that your windings are, your winding insulation is deteriorating and you can take that to the customer to help them plan, especially for big buildings, maybe with labs or uh, big rooftop equipment. As you start seeing that come down, you can plan to maybe replace one of those compressors in an off season versus waiting for it to actually short to ground and then everything is an emergency repair. So just some tools to put in your back pocket, especially for these times when uh, it's getting slow out there it's important for you to make sure you're getting all the knowledge you can using all the tools, everything you have available to you to help uh, be the best advisor that you can be to your customers and keep everyone happy and keep generating work for yourself. So hopefully that was helpful to someone. If you have any questions, make sure to drop a comment below. Let me know. Let me know what you guys would like to see next time. And like I said, make sure to subscribe, drop a comment. I'm going to be giving away this hand probe. I'll pick a random, I'll pick a random winner at the end of next week's video and I'll get it shipped out to you. So as I promised last time, I've got the Milwaukee stud and the Klein 11 in one that I was gonna be giving away from in this video. So I drew a random winner. And the random winner is Andrew King. Congrats to Justin, another well-made video, great comparison. Actually really surprising that the M12 beat up on all the other items so badly, especially with the RPM recommendations. So you haven't seen that video, that was the uh, spin tool 
So I'll go ahead and drop a card here so you can check that out if you haven't seen it. Uh, Andrew, go ahead and message me. I'll have my email in the description here and I'll get these sent out to you. Thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for checking out the channel. And I'll see you guys next time.